What is up budget builders? My name is Trill and today we have some super crazy news and I'm not talking about one subject matter but I have two crazy stories. I'm talking about President Biden. He now wants to offer up to $450,000 for illegal immigrants. How can he do something like that if he won't even give money to the people who need it the most in this country like our seniors and social security recipients and VA beneficiaries. You have got to be kidding me, right? Also, the progressives have prevented the physical infrastructure bill from being voted on in the House all week long as well as all month long. And now they are saying that we could have a stimulus deal sometime next week. I mean, why did you waste our time this past week and all month for that matter? Now, in addition, we have a response for President Biden from the former president, Donald Trump. And the progressives are now saying that we could have a stimulus deal by sometime next week. Now, those are just some of the topics that we are going to cover today. If you're interested in any of those, I would appreciate it if you just go ahead and hit the like button for us. It really helps out this video. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It's totally free. Now, let's go ahead and jump right back into the video. There is a surge in COVID cases going on right now in California. Their virus cases being reported have been increasing over the last couple of weeks. Governor Gavin Newsom said this time last year, we had around 4,000 virus cases. And then one month later, we had about 18,000 cases. And then one month after that, we had about 54,000 cases. Basically, the state saw a tripling of cases. Now, the state's seven-day average of COVID test positivity rate has begun to increase for the first time in months in California. The test positivity rate is one of the most trusted measures of infection spread because being a seven-day rolling average, it factors out jumps or slowdowns in testing that can impact raw case numbers. It also smooths out most increases or dips due to the backlogs in test results. Now, California's test positivity rolls over by 25% in the week and a half before Newsom made a statement, said that it increased from the post-summer low of 1.9% last Friday to 2.5% on Thursday. That was up from 2.2% on Wednesday of this week, according to the San Francisco Chronicle. So today the increase has steepened with the states reporting a test positivity rate of 2.8%. It's only one additional day of data, but it represents quite a jump given that test positivity had taken 10 days to rise 0.6%. And in just the past two days, it is now has risen the same amount. That's worsening to those who remember the bad old days of the late 2020 surge of virus cases, which began to take off right around the end of October. Now, uh, Governor Newsom said that we've been tracking this data very closely. We've got to be mindful of the winter months and safety enjoying the holidays together. He continued on and said, I know how hard it's been. We'll get through this. A new study by the Lancet Infectious Diseases is saying that vaccinated people can now spread the Delta variant to other vaccinated people. They're saying that people who have received COVID-19 vaccinations are able to spread the Delta variant within their household despite their vaccination status just as easily as unvaccinated individuals. According to the study published by the Lancet Infectious Diseases Journal, people who contracted COVID-19 had a similar viral load regardless of whether they had been vaccinated. The study further found that 25% of vaccinated households contacts contracted COVID-19 while 38% of unvaccinated individuals were diagnosed with the disease. Now, researchers examined 621 symptomatic participants in the United States over a year. Although vaccines remain highly effective at preventing severe diseases and deaths from COVID-19, our findings suggest that vaccination is not sufficient to prevent transmission of the Delta variant in household settings with prolonged exposures. In contrast, researchers noted that the vaccination was more effective at curbing transmissions of the alpha variant within the household at between 40 and 50%. 
Also on Thursday, the FDA authorized Pfizer vaccines for kids 5 and 11 years old. The Food and Drug Administration on Friday authorized Pfizer and Bio's Tech's coronavirus vaccine for children 5 to 11 years old. Now, in addition to that, the CDC approval is expected as early as next Tuesday. Now, in addition to that, Moderna, which is expected to receive their authorization from the FDA to use their vaccine from 5 and 11 years old as well. And one more news update that's dear to my heart. The artist and the singer known as Adele has officially announced her tour date, which it has been over five years since she performed on tour. I've got to go get me some tickets, guys, to go ahead and see her. And yes, guys, Adele has announced what appears to be the first two dates of her first live shows in over five years. The singer will perform two nights in London's Hyde Park in July. Adele also announced the dates on Twitter and referred fans to her website, Adele.com, for pre-sale information. She also announced that her fourth album will be released on November the 19th. The record will be her first since 2015's album, which was called 25, which also won six Grammy Awards. Now let's go ahead and talk about some stimulus update news. This is crazy, guys. President Biden has made a suggestion that the United States will give each illegal immigrant $450,000 for each person that was separated from their families. The Biden administration is considering giving $450,000 per person to immigrants separated at the border. According to the Wall Street Journal, the Departments of Justice, Homeland Security, and the Health and Human Services could end up paying out close to $1 million per immigrant family that was separated at the border. Sources told the journal that around $450,000 per person is being considered, but that figure could change depending on each family's circumstances. Now, discussions of payouts have taken place over the course of the past few months between lawyers representing immigrant families that are suing the federal government and the government's own lawyers, according to the journal. Some government lawyers apparently view the payout amounts as excessive. And I will say that amount is very excessive. I mean, first off, illegal immigrants, how does that work? And then secondly, why so much money? I get it, guys. I get it. These innocent children have been separated from their families and may never see them again. But on the flip side, there are other ways to attempt to connect them with their loved ones. And then thirdly, why are we giving out free money? We have our own citizens in this country, as well as homeless people in every city. Why are we not offering them any money? Our seniors, our social security recipients are on fixed incomes and the prices continue to skyrocket every day. Why are we not offering them any money? I mean, I understand not offering our own people $450,000, but how about an extra $500 per month? That would help majority of them and get them the extra money to survive and keep food on their tables and afford these high prescription drug prices. I mean, $450,000 is insane, guys. Now, I'm sure this will never pass, especially knowing that there are about 1,700 children that still haven't been reunited with their families. This could cost the United States billions of dollars to fund this notion by President Biden. I mean, literally, after he made this statement, I started singing that viral song that's been going around called Let's Go Brandon. <laughs> Let's Go Brandon. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, guys, go ahead and look it up yourourself. I can't show it on this video. Well, Republicans have become furious over this idea as well, saying that we're paying burglars who broke into our homes. I mean, furious Republicans slam President Biden for the plan to pay $450,000 per person up to $1 million a family to relatives separated at the border under Trump's zero tolerance policy, which I must say, I agree with this statement. Where on earth you can break the law and get $450,000 for doing it? Only in the United States, right? And then they say this is the best country on earth. Well, yeah, if you were giving away $450,000 to each person, man. Now, former President Trump responded to this idea. Former President Trump said on Friday, it's not even believable that President Biden's administration is debating $450,000 payments per person to migrants who were separated from their families at the southern border. 
He said, one of the things that we were doing is, you know, separation, which was done before us. Trump said when people heard that they didn't come because if a parent fears they're going to be separated from the children, they didn't come. Trump also said that no country can sustain what's happening to our country. Taunting immigration court battles, his administration has successfully won while noting his work with the Mexican government to prevent the flow of migrants to America. Anyways, guys, it ain't happening. It better not happen. The U.S. can barely afford to pay its own bills with the debt ceiling hitting earlier this month. But tell me, guys, what do you think about this? Also, progressives have been holding up the physical infrastructure bill from being voted on in the House for over a month now. But on Thursday, they stated that we could have a stimulus deal by next week. Progressives see infrastructure vote next week. House liberals are playing the long game. The progressives who bucked their president to block an infrastructure vote this week also lowered the bar for moving an even larger social benefits package at the heart of Joe Biden's domestic policy agenda. Now in a two-step dance that's rankled party leaders in the near term, but simultaneously paved the way for quicker action on both proposals, perhaps as early as next week. Now, Pramila J. Paul said while she was leaving Washington to head back home, she said, I don't think it'll even take that long, to be honest. The timeline will hinge on the resolution of a series of outstanding issues still under negotiations within the family benefits package, as well as the drafting of the legislative language reflecting those lingering decisions. But with much of the text already released and with the Progressive Caucus already endorsing that legislative framework, the liberals say that both bills could be on the floor in a matter of days. Now, Pramila said that we have the text. That's all we needed. And then we heard from Representative Don Bayer, and he said, I am renewedly optimistic. Bayer told The Hill on Friday that he expects the House to vote on the one package, likely the infrastructure bill, on Tuesday, and then take up the $1.75 trillion social and climate spending package later in the week. And then we heard from a third House progressive. They said that I feel really good about next week where they had been holding the line in opposition to the infrastructure bill. Now, this burst of optimism follows shortly on the heels of an embarrassing setback for the Biden and the Democrat leaders who were racing to the stage on Thursday for a vote on the popular one point two trillion dollar infrastructure bill, which was passed in the Senate back in August. But anyways, guys, hey, that's it for today. If you enjoy this type of content, Content and you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It's totally free. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like button for us. It really helps out the channel as well as it tells YouTube to share this video with others. But anyways, guys, hey, I appreciate you guys stopping by and watching and I hope to see you on the next video. Peace.